Confidential Tenancies New Tenant Information Presentation. You should have the following documents in front of you. The General Tenancy Agreement, Form 18A, which is the tenancy contract, your lease. The Information Statement from the RTA, the 17A Pocket Guide for Tenants. The Form 2, Bond Lodgement Form. The RTA Form 1A, your Entry Condition Report plus any other associated documents provided to you from our agency, which your property manager will go through with you after this presentation. We have provided you a pen and paper ready just in case you have any questions to or points to raise at the end of the presentation. The General Tenancy Agreement, Form 18A, is a legal binding contract between yourself and the owner. We act on behalf of the owner. The following tenancy agreement is about to be explained to you. As previously stated, the tenancy agreement is a legal binding contract between yourself and the owner. Item 1 on the contract, if you refer to it, has the owner's name, care of our agency. Item 2 has your names. Please make sure we have spelt your names correctly and that we have the best contact number and email address for you. Item 3 of the agreement sets out our agency details, our address, phone, mobile and email. Always be sure to keep this document in a safe place in the event you need to refer to it during the tenancy. Item 4 requests your consent for notices to be issued via email. Before we proceed any further, let's discuss the meaning of notices as per the terms in the contract. Standard Term 44 of the contract on page 7 sets out the meaning of notices with further explanations. Subsection 1 states, a notice under this agreement must be written, and if there is an approved form for the notice, it must be in the approved form. All communication and notices throughout this agreement must be in writing. We will discuss further about maintenance matters shortly. In the event of an emergency situation, you are allowed to phone our agency. We will discuss that more shortly. Please review Standard Term 44 in detail, along with, of course, all other terms of the agreement. We bring to your attention particularly Standard Term 44.8, which covers the issuing of notices, particularly in relation to email. When you consent to the use of email, Standard Term 44.89d sets out when the notice is deemed to have been received by you. You will note that notices sent by email are deemed to be received once it enters your server, not when you open the email. <coughs> Here you are acknowledging the acceptance of all notices being emailed to you during this tenancy. Please now refer to item 5 of the agreement. Item 5.1 sets out the address of the rental premises that you are taking possession of. Item 2 sets out the inclusions, which includes the RTA Form 1A Entry Condition Report and Inventory if applicable. Item 6.1 states the terms of your agreement, and 6.2 states the starting date of your contract plus the ending date of the agreement. Please note, if there is an ending date on the agreement, it doesn't mean the agreement ends on that date automatically. Notice time frames and forms have to be issued by either party to end the agreement. The tenancy does not automatically end on the end date of the agreement. It automatically becomes a periodic agreement. Please now move on to page 2 of the agreement. Items 7, 8, 9 and 10 set out information in relation to rent payable, when it must be paid, how to pay your rent and where the place of rent payment is. Item 11 sets out your rental bond amount. The rental bond amount payable will be lodged with the RTA. We will explain that in more detail shortly. Please also now refer to item 12, the services supplied to the premises which you as a tenant must pay. Further moving on to items 13 and 14 if applicable, please refer to those terms to ensure and see if they apply. Item 15 sets out the number of persons allowed to reside at the premises. No other people can move into the property unless they are approved by the owner. Please refer to the terms of agreement or speak to your property manager for more information if required. Item 16 applies if there is a body corporate bylaws in your property situation. If there are body corporate bylaws, you should have yes and yes 
ticks at items 16.1 and 16.2. Body corporate bylaws must be applied to at all times. Item 17 will set out whether pets have been approved at the property or not. Please note, if pets have not been approved, they cannot be kept at the property at any time. Now, item, item 18 of the agreement sets out nominated repairers of the property. We shall explain this in further detail now. Furthering on from item 18 of the agreement, please now refer to standard term 30 of the agreement, which sets out the meaning of emergency and routine repairs. Turn to page 6 of the agreement. Standard Term 30 sets out the legal definition of emergency and routine repair under your tenancy agreement. Standard Term 30, subsection 1, sets out the emergency repair provisions. If any of these events occur during your tenancy, please be sure to ring, ring, ring our agency. In the event of an after-hours emergency, please be sure to contact us on the after-hour emergency number provided. If your repair is not an emergency as set out by law, it falls into the category of Standard Term 30, subsection 2, Routine Repairs. We remind you of the obligations on under Standard Term 44.1, which requires that all notices and communication to be in writing. You can email us or you can fill out the repair maintenance form provided to you as part of this sign-up. For more information, be sure to talk to your property manager at the end of this presentation. The Form 18A is made up of 44 standard terms. These standard terms are the law and are non-negotiable. Please be sure to review all of the terms before signing the agreement. If you have any questions, be sure to speak to your property manager at the end of this presentation. All of the standard terms are important. For example, Standard Term 7 sets out the cost applied to an early ending of a fixed term agreement. Once you've signed the agreement for a fixed term, you are locked into that agreement until the end of the tenancy, or another legal matter applies. Be sure that you clearly understand these terms, especially Term 7, prior to committing to the tenancy. In addition to the standard terms of the agreement, there are special terms. Be sure to review all standard and special terms prior to signing. Further recommendations from our agency is to review the information statement and to be sure to keep it in a safe place during your tenancy to refer to if needed. We also recommend that you visit the RTA website if needed during your tenancy. Of course, if you have questions, you can always speak to your property manager as well. The Residential Tenancies and Rooming Accommodation Act of Queensland sets out the rights and responsibilities of both parties to the agreement. The parties, of course, are the lessor client and you as the tenant. We manage the property on behalf of the lessor, the landlord. What are your rights and responsibilities as a tenant when renting? You are required to pay your rent on time and in a way written in the agreement. You are required to abide by the terms of the agreement and any body corporate bylaws that apply. You must tell us if you damage the premises, accidentally or otherwise, and of course you are required to follow the rules set out by the legislation. You are also required not to ever use your premises as an illegal purpose. Your premises must always mainly be used as your home unless otherwise agreed. You are required not to cause a nuisance or seriously affect the reasonable peace, comfort or privacy of your neighbours. You're further required to keep inclusions clean, for example, the stove. You are also required to ensure that you and your guests don't deliberately damage the property. And of course, you are responsible for your behaviour and that of your guests. The Entry Condition Report The RTA Form 1A Entry Condition Report is one of the most important documents in your tenancy. You will see that we have thoroughly prepared the report in detail. You, by law, have three days after moving into the property to notate any thoughts, changes or comments, plus sign it and return it to our agency. Failure to return within the legal three-day period will mean the document we provided to you will be used to determine your bond refund at the end of your tenancy. Please note, it is really important to our agency that we agree from the beginning of the tenancy. If you have any concerns or questions in relation to the report, please be sure to speak to your property manager immediately and within the three-day period to discuss any matters you wish to bring to our attention. 
In relation to the entry condition report, the RTA recommend that you complete your part of the report the day before you move in, so you can recall the true condition of the premises at the start of the tenancy before you have lived there. Again, a reminder that you have three days to return the report to our agency. Please refer to Standard Term 5 of the agreement if required for more information. When you pay your rental bond to our agency, we will provide you with a trust account receipt. We will then lodge your bond with the RTA, the Residential Tenancies Authority, within 10 days. In the coming weeks, you will receive a receipt from the RTA as evidence that your bond is now lodged with the authority and is held in trust. Please note that your contents are not covered by any landlord insurance policies. If you want protections for your belongings, please make sure you take it out your own contents insurance. What if you don't pay your rent on time and you get a Notice to Remedy Breach, Form 11? Well, firstly, please make sure to contact your property manager if ever you are starting to get behind in your rent or fear that you may. But what happens if you do get behind? Once you are more than seven days behind in your rent, you have obviously breached your agreement. We can issue on behalf of the landlord client an RTA Form 11 Notice to Remedy Breach. You then have, by law, seven days to pay whatever is owing. If you pay your rent and fix the problem within seven days, your tenancy will continue. If you are having difficulty again, please contact your property manager to discuss the issue. If you don't pay your rent within the time allowed by law, we act on behalf of the landlord and can give you a Form 12 Notice to Leave to end the tenancy which then gives you a minimum of seven days to leave for unremedied rent arrears. If a breach is given to you for another matter, such as unapproved occupants or unapproved pets, and the breach is not remedied, we could, on behalf of the owner, subject to their instructions, give you 14 days notice to leave for unremedied general breaches of your agreement. Or application can be made to the RTA's Dispute Resolution Service to assist us all in solving the problem. There are a number of reasons set out in law that entry can be made during your tenancy. For example, carrying out repairs or maintenance, or we regularly do routine inspections on behalf of the owner. These inspections occur every three to four months. Prior to entry, we will provide you with an RTA Entry Notice Form 9, setting out the reason for entry and also the correct time frame. For further information, refer to the Standard Term 20 of the agreement. You will always be notified in the event of general inspections. If you have any further questions, again, please make sure to speak to your property manager. Your property has working smoke alarms and a safety switch installed. Who is responsible for the smoke alarms? The smoke alarms have just been cleaned and tested within 30 days prior to your tenancy starting now. We do ask, however, of course, please make sure smoke alarm batteries are never removed and make sure the alarm stays in working order at all times. This is a legal requirement and, of course, a safety requirement as well. You would be breaching your agreement if an alarm was taken down and if a battery was removed. Please be sure for your safety and the safety of others that smoke alarms are always in working order. You are responsible throughout the tenancy for replacing any batteries that may become flat. If you have any questions, please be sure to contact your property manager or, of course, contact the RTA or the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service during your tenancy. We are now coming to a close of this presentation. Please ensure that you have any questions ready for your property manager who will be joining you shortly. Welcome to your new home.